I've got James Brown. Most people know him as JB, CBS NFL broadcaster. James, thanks for joining us. DR, my pleasure really to be Really good stuff. Here with you, sir. Um, I want to get into you know the business of the league and talk mm -hmm. about that aspect. But first, let's just start with football. Mm -hmm. What storylines do you like this season? A year ago, we were talking to uh, Lewis Riddick from, from ESPN. He was saying it's all about the young quarterbacks. Now this year, I feel like it's a it's a different story. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm loving the young quarterbacks and the excitement that they're bringing to it. For so long, the narrative was a running quarterback, the definition, can't sustain it, won't take it to a championship game. Are you kidding me? I think the league is changing. The rules have been such. The kind of quarterbacks who are coming in, like Lamar Jackson, like um, Deshaun Watson, uh, like Patrick Mahomes. But Aaron Rodgers has been the precursor to that anyway. Russell Wilson, sensational. So I'm loving the job that these quarterbacks are doing and that the coaches, Dan, are designing offenses around the strengths that they bring to the table. Doesn't mean that some of the excellent pocket quarterback passes aren't going to still be there. New England area, Tom Brady, who displays a certain amount of speed in a small area, what they call SAQ, small area quickness, because he knows how to step up in the pocket. I'm loving that about it, and it's changing the league. Lamar Jackson, huge story. Now, the reason I said it's not just about the young quarterbacks, there's also a number of defensive players getting a ton of attention, and, and the sure. Bosa brothers. That's a huge story to me. And you know what? And they should get the credit. I'm loving And again, even on the defensive side of the ball, it's showing that defensive coordinators are playing to their strengths. Heavens, look at Jadavian Clowney. Many of us probably thought, you know, the guy just didn't translate well coming from college to the pros, but it was how they used him. Look at him in Seattle right now. He is one of the most disruptive forces out there. The Bosa family, they don't know what getting tired is. They have an engine that just won't quit. So I think the league is in good hands with this young talent that's coming up, but we still have some veterans who have a lot of utility and still getting it done, like Aaron Rodgers. When Ben Roethlisberger comes back uh, from injury, etc. Tom Brady, the ageless wonder, I just don't get it how he continues. Uh, every guest today at this Paley Media Center event has been talking about streaming. And in one way or another, it is affecting every industry, the cord cutting trend. And the NFL's TV broadcasts are going to come up, you know, one by one in the next three to four years. A lot of people think, you know, gosh, CBS says that it will re-up that contract. And yet uh, these tech players want to get in more than ever before. Amazon now is streaming 10 Thursday night football games. Twitter was streaming a couple NFL games. When you look at that, how does that affect things, do you think, moving forward? I mean, if you are, say, commentating on a game that you know is being streamed exclusively. You know, and now Amazon, when it does these streams, it offers some broadcasts that are just on Amazon that have their own announcers. Is that something you think about? Does that change things for your job? And what do you think might happen when the TV contracts get renegotiated? Coming from the uh, broadcast uh, ranks myself, having started out in play-by-play -play and actually in color when I was doing NBA basketball, it should not change what you do at all. Call a good, clean game. I guess I go back to the... Um, uh, the, the moniker that John Madden, the iconic broadcaster, would say, the game is still the thing. You can dress it up, you can talk analytics, you can embellish it, but the game is still the thing. So call a good, clean, sound game. Streaming only embellishes, augments, takes it to a new level. Look, uh, millennials, Gen X, they consume media and entertainment differently than what us older folks did. And the league, as we talked about there, they have to reach that level and make certain that they're including them, and they are. To be clear, broadcast television is still the support because you can get to the widest possible audiences with broadcast television. But when you talk about streaming, all the digital platforms out there, social media, yep. there is an insatiable appetite for it. You need to feed it. JB, you're a news guy. I want to get your take on some recent news. Mm -hmm. Reports that Colin Kaepernick is going to get a tryout this coming Saturday. All the teams are invited to come watch. There's some controversy around why is this happening now? Was it a team? Was it the league that set it up? What do you think might be the result here? Might a team give him a look and actually bring him on? I think you're going to be surprised to see how many teams show up in terms of representatives who are going to be there on Saturday to watch him. Some people cynically were saying that it's a PR move. How in the world and what PR person would recommend this move after week 10 when things are trending so well for the league to deal with a controversial issue like that, to derail it? That person ought to be fired if that's the case. So there's some real substance there. Um, I think people are going to be surprised, and there are going to be more team representatives there than folks are giving credit. And all of this came about because there were a number of teams that were petitioning the league office to say, hey, what about his football worthiness? Can we give him a tryout? You know, I'm not sure our viewers know, I'm not sure many people know that you are a part owner mm. of the Nets. 
So let's switch from football to baseball. Congratulations. Thank you World very much. Series. We just had Commissioner Rob Manfred talking about the World Series. That has its own controversies now, but a huge win for the Nats. A really exciting World Series that went all the way to Game 7. Tell us a little bit about your part ownership in the team. When did that come about? How big was this for you as a, as a D.C. guy? Well, the team owners, uh, the learners, are friends. I met them through some other families that are involved in uh, real estate and development in my neighborhood. Uh, the learners, Mark Lerner, who I know extremely well, he and his wife Judy are good friends, good people. They wanted to get into the uh, ownership business for quite some time. They were trying after the Washington professional football team organization as well. But what they're doing, here's what I love about it. Having been around sports for so long, there was not a knee-jerk reaction when the team was 19 and 31 back in May. If you feel that you've got the right guy in place there, and Mike Rizzo, the general manager, is a lifer, then you leave him in there. You have to weather the storms. They also have more free agents on that team than any other squad. So you find the right free agents. That's the chemistry that you have to find. These guys still have utility, but they also were showing the young pups what being a pro is all about. Now, i got to be honest with you. After they went down 0-3 in Houston, I'm thinking, you know what? Just win one more so they can show, well, they surprised me. This team was absolutely resilient. Now the key is, are you going to be able to keep them together because they captured magic? And they did it without Bryce Harper. And you know what? To, to Bryce's credit, I saw how much he was complimenting his mm. colleagues along the way as well, too. So, hey, I guess it was a case of addition by subtraction. Since we are talking about what the different leagues do, we hit baseball, we are talking about the NFL, uh, to what extent do you watch what's happening with the other leagues as kind of a measure for the NFL? I mean, you know, the NBA in China has been such a recent news story and that issue and all the big leagues and you're you know, very involved with NFL and broadcasting NFL games. All of them obviously want to grow outside the U.S. Uh, the NFL is also doing a lot in London. Where do you see that going and, and do you think that the NFL should be taking a page from the books of any of the other leagues? I think they all look at each other. Um, the term is self-scouting and football. When you check yourself to see if there are some tendencies and habits or what the other teams are doing, that concept, if you will, is what's taking place in expanding outside of the U.S. market as well, too. We've talked to a number of people in terms of NFL over in London, right. and there is real fan enthusiasm about that. Yes, you can take notes from the other leagues as well, too. You would be foolish not to because there are some common threads that run through them all, and what works for one can work for the other. I heard Mr. Manfred talk about uh, one of the biggest audience that they had, I guess, was in Japan, but then again, that's, very, that's part and parcel to it. Uh, the Dominican Republic, of course, in terms of the feeder system. Heavens, uh, my CBS News producer is from Curacao. We did a story in Curacao, and per capita, there are more baseball players in the Major League Baseball um, a League than in the Dominican and Puerto Rico because of the love of baseball there as well, too. So you do take notes from the other leagues, absolutely. All right, we got to leave it there. JB, really Sounds appreciate good. you joining us. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.